2023 was an absolutely epic year for Throttle. I would say maybe the best year yet, and we are so excited to show you every single build from start to finish in the year 2023. Roll the footage. Starting off with Thomas's dream build, Acura RSX. This was a really fun one, Ricky. This I really enjoyed really this good. car. We That's a lot, lot of parts. There's a ton of parts going on in this car. Ooh, you remember how rough shape this thing was when it came in? Yeah, it was, it was super dusty. Super dirty. The engine bay was really dirty. No big deal, though. That's what we do here. Oh, yeah, we did pull the engine out for this one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, this oh, thing got that. super yeah. cleaned up. I remember that. Oh, man. Action clutch. Oh, look at that thing. Yeah, oh, a lot it's of old and crusty. Here. Yeah. Let's go. Look at you. Oh, that's right. We took the whole <laughs> subframe out. We the did. Front. Yeah, yeah, it came out with the front look of the car. Look at Will. <laughs> Pressure washing everything. This car really cleaned up nicely. It's my boy Will right there. Oh, there you go, your action clutch flywheel, the new clutch. Action clutch, man, their clutch is so sick, dude. Like, they're, uh, the way the clutch pedal feels is like very OEM, like, look at that. Boom. It's already looking a lot better. A new starter, new alternator. Yeah, every time we do one of these, uh, every time we pull the engine to clean it up, we usually replace the starter and alternator. We try to uh, replace as many parts as we can. That makes sense. Look at that. Boom. Back on the rack. Painted kind of suffering. Thermostat. The thermostat. We did a yeah. cooling system on this as well. Got yes, our, we oh, yeah, there it is. Ooh, Got a radiator fans. fan trap. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Direct yeah. replacement stuff always fits so nice. I know. Oh, and yeah, the hoses. physical hoses, too. Wow, this is a long time ago, man. This is the very beginning of the year. That's right. Engine cover, yep. AM nice intake. AM oh, I there. remember that because we had, had an old intake on it and we had to remove it. And it, like the other intake came with its own washer bottle. Yeah. And so we had to yeah. make this new one fit. Look at that. Damn. Here we go. Is that me taking the valve cover out? Oh, you know why I took it off? Because I'm working, baby. Look at that. Damn. That cover turned out nice. Yeah. I've always loved, loved uh, wrinkled uh, paint on valve covers. It always looks so nice. And red's just such a stylish color. I know. Red, red looks good on everything. Mm -hmm. It looks so well. Look at Will. I don't see any wires there, bro. <laughs> that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all rusty stuff. What do we use for this car, remember? We use EBCs? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I like that shirt. I have that shirt on right now. All right, this is my own. Skunk 2. Billet control arms, baby. I remember putting those on. Those were nice. They're really nice. Really nice piece. Mm -hmm. Are those Kong 2 as well? No, those are BCBRs, baby. Hey. BC Racing. We did a lot of BC coilovers this year. I'm stoked oh on that. Oh my God, yes we did. Every kit is just so good. Yep, EBC, EBC brakes. brakes. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Repan the calipers. I didn't know you were setting up cardboard tents for all this all Oh, this that's right. I built a whole oven for them. Cause like, oh, because you shot on fluoro. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I remember that we did a lot of fluoro on this yes, car. Yes, we did. About Especially it. towards the end. And the thing with us is like, when you're at home and you're building these cars, like you have the ability to wait a couple of days to let stuff dry. Like we have hours and then we need to keep, you know, keep going at it. So uh, the oven helps out because it dries everything really quickly. Progress bars. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah floral is a hard color to shoot. Yes, it is. I've gotten pretty good over the years, but um, you can Never easily can. overshoot it. And it'll look more yellow than floral. Mm hmm Oh, we did the wheel wells on this thing oh, too. Oh, yeah. that's brand that's really new. Nice. That wheel it does. Look at that. that. I love that blue. That's a nice blue. I don't think we've ever done. That was the first blue we ever done, right? Vinyl wrap? Uh, maybe. Since you've been I here? I don't remember. I don't remember any other blue. We did the paint blue. We painted. Oh, no. No, the Subaru was blue. The Evo was blue. Yeah, but it, that was paint. Those were all paint, yeah. Yeah, this is like the first vinyl wrap that's blue. Brand new hell lights, brand new tail lights. I already see the Optima yellow top battery on there. But well, we put a lot in this car. 
carbon fiber wing. Oh, the big wing. I remember that. That's we right. A huge wing on this thing. That's yeah, right. it looks sick. Yeah. That really made the car uh, get a new look, a new sporty look. 100%. Nice Magnaflow exhaust system on I it. I think it sounds so good too. It's one of the things that Magnaflow does well. They uh, really focus on their sound. That car sounded really good. RT660s, I see those. Some Cusco, Cusco racing as always. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, Thomas got hooked up. Look, look at that. It looks so well. Oh, that's right, we did a body kit too. What mm -hmm. bumper is that? I totally forget what bumper that um, is. Oh God, I forgot. The carbon canards, carbon mm -hmm. skirts. Mm -hmm. That thing turned out nice. But we did seats too? We did not do seats on this. No, yeah, we did, we did sparklers. No way. We did a QRTRs, I think. <laughs> you did a short shifter, I'm assuming? We did, uh, that was, what was the brand of that? Acuity, Acuity. Yeah, we did an Acuity short shifter on that. I remember that was such a nice piece. The acuity shifters are really oh, look at that wow. thing, dude. It looks so sick. How can I not remember this? It fits this so well. This looks really nice. I have a good friend who works at Acuity. Oh really? really? Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. This is that's really cool. How did I not remember that? Boom. Easy piece for Quinn. You make everything look so easy. Four knob on there, baby. Let's, let's go. go. You gotta match it. You gotta match. Yeah. Body club. Oh yeah, the QTRs. Oh man, Tomas, you got a really nice build. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, we did a steering wheel. We did the carbon. No, aftermarket steering wheel. Foil. I don't remember this at all. Well, you put it on, so you better. <laughs> I really don't remember it. You have a track light, Mateki oh, track light wheels. Oh, that's right. They're super light too. Boom, Yeah, there you go. four accents on it. That car turned out sick. I love that hood. Look at that. That's a huge difference, bro. Massive difference. That's really cool. Oh, that's also, we did the, we did the front calipers. We did the Acura TSX front calipers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The four yeah, pistons yeah, yeah. up front turned out really nice. Here we go, the S4. Yeah, the S4, which I actually bought back. From I know. The I, this is the first time this has ever happened. Um, but yeah, I remember driving this car and being really surprised yeah. because I'd never driven a modern Audi. And uh, this was one of my favorite mods that we did was this S Tech PPF. It looks so great, man. Like the making the same original color of satin, yeah. and it's PPF, man. You're it, literally protecting it from everything out there. The quality too of it, like it just looked OEM. Right. Where sometimes with wraps you can see imperfections and stuff, and it just looked great. It looks so. Oh, good. there's Will. Mr. Will. <laughs> Big Willy style. Oh man, I remember getting some of those nuts off. It was really hard. So I wasn't there for that. I was yeah, where gone. Were you? I think I was in Vegas with the Super. We were racing uh, the Super at an event. Yeah, I, I uh, had my hands on this car. Yes, you I wonder did. if that's why I ended up buying it, because I felt attached to it. But yeah, me and Will knocked out a bunch of stuff. We got the AWE catback exhaust, which sounds great. Man, that's a good thing you don't work on a lot of cars. So You'd be buying all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we built a lot of cars here. All right, ooh, air suspension. That's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah. The whole air but suspension. You, you came back halfway through this, because I remember you helped with some of it. But we'll did I do the back end, like the trunk? No, I did. I don't. But I don't remember much you'll about. See, you'll see yourself. You car. join in. But yeah, Will and yeah. I tossed these in. Pretty straightforward airlift setup. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you like it so far driving it now? I like it. Like it. It's good. It. This is my second car with airlift struts on it. Oh, um, this one has the full airlift 3P management, and it's great for a daily driver. Like I don't. I don't track the car. It feels good. Like it's comfortable, and then I can park it. Hard park it and it looks literally you know, anywhere. He said Penelope doesn't like the, she, uh, Yeah, my daughter does not like it because it's loud. Because the compressors turn out. <laughs> oh, so that, that makes why. sense. Oh, that makes oh, sense. Saw she doesn't like the compressors. Well, I don't know. The whole car is just kind of loud. It's too loud for yeah. Her. Oh yeah, that plate took me a long time because I had to basically. There you are. See, I oh, knew see, you helped bam. Up. You made the mount for the. Oh, three people, that's right. Which is actually really sick because you recessed it like up right. to the. Almost the roof of the truck, oh, I guess. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah, it looks really good. 
Yeah, yeah I haven't had a single issue with it. And yeah, see, look at how clean it is. Oh yeah, looks, it looks really good, yeah. Dude, why are we putting the stock wheels back on? What's going on? Oh, Thule! Oh, the new wheels the new yeah. Thule roof we rack. So, fun fact, I I had the rack on for a little bit. The, okay. This, the, what do you call that box? The Thule box? box. Thule. Yeah, they call it Thule box. Thule, Thule, box. Thule box, yeah. I had that on the car for a while, and then I was like, well, I don't really need to drive around with this. So I took it off, and then I found out that I could actually get the same wing bars and put it on my wife's car, and we just used it on my wife's X5. Oh, so you just switch the box. So we just moved the box. Oh, around, man, that's great. It's actually really helpful. And there we go, Rotiform. Here we go, now it's looking LTN better. LTN 20 inch, I remember the yeah. first time you just sent it. We just aired yeah. it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember oh, that. Oh my God, I'm so glad we didn't crunch the fenders up. <laughs> <laughs> this is our carbon fiber stuff, uh, ECS tuning stuff. We got like the whole package. The whole package. The, uh, and, yeah, we got the cool. uh, the honeycomb grill as well. Yeah, that made a big difference on the car. That was the zero three four motorsports little engine cover. Carbon everywhere. Got, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Everything's so holding up really good too. I think I don't remember. We never we didn't PPF on top of it, but everything's holding up really good. And oh, that's good. right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Top of the carbon. Yeah. We yeah. Did the PPF first, but. Everything yeah, it looks still really in good. great shape. I love the black, the black badges. Mm-hmm. Big transformation. The interior is one of my favorite parts yeah. about this car. The red interior looks so great. Looks really good. Will struggling to get those uh, badges on straight. It's a big moment right there. You can't. You only get you one shot, off, really. Yeah. What am I doing now? No sway bar? I don't even remember this thing. Yes, hey! Sway bar. Yeah, zero. Is it zero three four motorsports? Yeah. 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 All three four motorsports. Oh, the yeah. brakes are epic on this car too. So yeah, we did all That's the right. end links, That's the sway right. bars, two piece, two piece floating rotors. Yep. That was one of the biggest things that I uh, I was really impressed by. Look at those things. Oh, we did a transmission mount. So look yeah. at that. <laughs> it's one of those things kind of hard to to notice because we don't drive the car right. a lot before we did all of it. But yeah, it's got all the bracing like I mean, yeah, honestly, really the car handles really well. What, one of the things I was really concerned about was making the engine bay look better, and all three, four motorsports came yeah. through with everything, all and it made there. such a huge difference on it. And they're not very expensive either. They're not. We always they're not, like no. to do yeah. some engine bay stuff, so. Big old brakes. Yeah, the brakes are super huge. good. Look at that. It looks so great. Look at Will. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny is the EBC red stuff pads actually match the calipers this I know. I usually have to like paint them. Blue. <laughs> Or black or, or green and i have to paint them p3 gauge so that's actually another really cool mod yeah. like oem yeah. and i actually have one of those coming for our next build as well oh really yeah i really like those this look at that side skirt extension. yeah this is the last thing you guys yeah did. i, th I think so touch, yeah right? And then, yep, oh, boom. On the road trip. Yeah, that was to Julian, right? Yeah, to Julian, yeah, yeah. yeah so now, with the Thule box on top, does it make extra noise? Not really. Really? No, it's, oh, really it's very sleek. Like yeah. Oh, the that's old good. Ones, I think, used to make yeah, I like the shoot. This was, who was it, Quinn and Nate or yeah. something? Yeah. He was saying, like, he didn't really work on this car a lot. Yeah. He drove it more than yeah. he did. No, he worked on it. Look at that. Oh, that's yeah. such a cool view. Good job, guys. Good. That's really cool. This thing is sick, man. It's just like a great cruiser. and. Um, you know, the fact that the winner, Cody, was like, I just can't have this car anymore. I already have another car. And then he called me. It was really awesome. So I was happy to make an offer for it. And I've been driving it. It's great. It's cool to see it back. All right, the Razor, one of the weirdest things we've had in the shop, I think, to date is this off road like Razor truck. We put a whole sound system in it. We that put thing a bunch sounded of lights amazing. On it. Amazing. Yeah. The, the Rocco Fosca AK was really good. And we threw every light we could at it. Like, literally. Yeah, I was trying. We did a roof rack. We did the sides. We did the back. Um, oh my God. That's, what's that called? The zombie, the zombie apocalypse uh, kit? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, we literally threw lights everywhere on this thing. There was a lot of wiring done. But it turned out amazing. Look at that. It did turn. And it was at SEMA too. I saw it. It at SEMA. was. They rechanged the uh, the look of it. All the lights are there in the roof rack that we saw is there in the sound system, but um, they did a livery on it. Ooh, Dream Build 6. The Prelude. The Prelude. This was one of my favorite ones. I used to own a Prelude. I actually had a fourth gen Prelude VTEC, but when Shelby submitted this car, um, we were all pretty hyped on it. It seemed like the perfect candidate to transform. 
You needed a lot of maintenance on this one. Yeah, well, it needed a lot of maintenance. Yeah. It had a bunch of fluid leaks, the clutch was going out. Um, who who knows how long the timing belt has been in there. Like, no, no, they did a timing belt on it. That's right. And they it was, timing wanna, was off. Yeah, the timing was right off, thing. yeah. So it was kind of running a little funky, but we just had a lot of leaks and a lot of minor things to fix up and clean up. And You pulled the engine, didn't you? Yeah, we did pull yeah. the engine. We cleaned everything. We pressure yeah, washed it, pressure meters. washed the bay, yeah. Yeah, the thing was pretty filthy. A Florida car, unpainted front bumper. Yeah, it wasn't really rusty at all, which no. is good. It's just kind of dirt generally everywhere, it's you know? It's just yeah. an old it's car, old. Yeah. yeah. It's just it pretty normal, cheap, so. Really good platform for modification, though, I will say. I love the H-Series motors. I mean, back in the day when we were first getting into Honda, that was like the big block, the 2.2 liter. And they had a lot of torque compared to like the B series and K series weren't that popular when, when I first got into it, but oh yeah, there you go. Spring Just degreasing down. everything. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, thing actually cleaned up pretty nice from what I remember. It yeah, did, yeah. Well, it's all, they're all aluminum blocks. So it's like, they don't stain like a, you know, cast iron block does and you just really clean them up. And the, the difference is so clear when yeah. it's clean versus when it's dirty. I think if you're a car enthusiast and you have the opportunity to get a pressure washer, it's a tool that we use all the time. Oh yeah. It makes a huge difference. Clean and paint. Clean and paint. Exactly. I mean, it makes a huge difference just keeping stuff clean. Oh, this, this is something that I've done probably three or four times on Hondas, which is doing the timing. And and yeah. You're, you're like a machine with it, Quinn. It takes me a long time. To Honda's good because they design their stuff really well and they design it to be serviceable. Mm -hmm. A lot of car manufacturers don't for some reason, but like, like Honda's, Ferrari. yeah, like you gotta pull <laughs> the engine. I mean, you don't have to pull the engine out to do a belt on yeah. these, but they're just easy to deal with, which is really nice. Yeah, it was time to get rid of those uh, crusty projector lights. Those things after sitting in the sun for a while, the lenses usually get pretty smoked on them. So I always liked, uh, and you'll see a little bit later, like that OEM plus look. Um, new cooling system. Ooh. Repaint the cover. Yeah, difference. gotta shine it up, dude. You guys did that for uh, the Every RSX. Car. RSX, Every it was wrinkle red yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. a lot it's of wrinkle red valve covers. Looks really nice. Honda color scheme. Yeah, they're just great cars. If like if you want to get into cars, start with so, them yeah. because they're super easy to maintain. They're very simple. You learn all the systems very easily, and they're just like it's not an overwhelming car yeah, to it's, learn. It's like not expensive either. Like the parts are pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. You can find them easily. And this car actually drove great. It was really yeah. enjoyable to drive. Yeah. The trusty BCBR coilovers. I don't know if you knew this, but we are one of the top retailers of BC coilovers in the whole country. So if you're looking for coilovers oh. or any parts, uh, check out the link in the video you description. Hit them with yeah. The ad, yeah. <laughs> you got, I mean. Dude, no, I mean, you might as well have them buy them from us, right? Yeah, I mean. They get entered to win. They do. You get entered to win our sweepstakes, which we launch every quarter. So, you know, you might as well plug it if you got it. We trust BC. We use them on almost everything here. Dude, and it's a good product. I've been so. buying BCs for all my cars way yeah. before I started here. I love them. E30, yeah, they're, they're so great. good. Yeah, they're man, just so good. Yeah. 32 way adjustable dampers, adjustable ride height all around. And the thing is, is you can adjust the ride height without messing with the spring preload. Yeah. A lot yeah. of these coilovers, you have to adjust the preload to adjust the height, which yeah. kind of compromises performance a little bit, in my opinion. So this is one thing that we definitely wanted to address with Shelby's car is it had this shifter in it that I don't even believe was made it, for a preload. It was, yeah, no, you can see like where the cables grab is way yeah. too long. So it wasn't even a prelude shifter and it was kind of funky to begin with, but we got a really solid one in there now. Yeah. So that's the, uh, it's the hybrid racing yep. one, right? So what a difference. Actually bolted down. And I know you had to make maybe a little clearancing, I think, to make it fit perfectly, but. Uh, no, I don't think. No, no, no I think right I had to unmodify something so, that had been okay, modified for the other shifter. That makes sense. Because I think the other one was for like a DC2 Integra yeah, or something right. like that, and the mounting plate yeah. had been messed with to get it to sit. Yeah, Skunk right. 2 catback exhaust, AM cold air intake, kind of classic standard moves right there. Yeah, really well put together kit. Like yeah. they had everything, the molding, the trimming, all that stuff came with the kit, which is really cool. And the instructions are super clear, which is always nice. And they're paper. Like a lot of these new companies, they'll put like a, a print a or a QR or code or something. They give you everything. Yeah. Some new fluids, of course. That peak OET. Got the Motul Racing engine yeah. oil in there with some RBF 660 fluids. Ooh, 
Ooh, like oh, ready like lip. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, and the Sabon carbon fiber hood, OEM style, like just cleans up the front end. And, and that was kind of a cool wing. It was. Found. I don't see a lot of people running that wing. It was kind of large, like a big mm -hmm. wing, but I think it looked great. And then this is also, I think, one of the, the coolest things we were able to do for Shelby's car is a big brake kit, which is something as a younger car enthusiast, I always wanted. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I could never afford. But yeah, I'm glad we were able to hook her up. Yeah, Rick and I were talking about this earlier. Just Willwood makes kits for everything. Yeah. Like every car they have a kit for, which is There's phenomenal. also some companies that work with Willwood. So if they don't make a kit specifically, you can often find adapter brackets and stuff yeah, that yeah. will work and, and be compatible with Willwood. So this took, wrap turned out really nice. Yeah. Too. This was, uh, we brought this car over to Enhanced Automotive uh, right down the street from us. Yeah. yeah and yeah, this is far. a tiny bot vinyl. And yeah, the color was the color really was cool. cool. It had a cool, yeah. sparkle cool pearl essence. Yeah. yeah, you don't really notice the pearl that much on the camera, but when yeah. you're yeah. looking yeah. at the car, yeah. it really, really pops. Cool. Looked amazing in the sun. You can kind of see the pearl peeking through. There we go. The Pro Master Seat Master Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. Ricardo Speed V's, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it says Ricardo. Ricardo's. <laughs> um, yeah, Ricky has made a lot of our seat brackets here, and he's got the hang of it. It's. It's so important to, to make sure that your car has seats that move forward and back. A lot of people put aftermarket seats and they just bolt them. They get bound up and, and then they don't slide nice. And slide. you gotta like kick the firewall to get yeah. the seat to move back, you know? So like having slide, seats that slide nice, especially aftermarket seats, it's, is it's like a such a luxury. Good. This is another thing that I think Ricky is so good at is like restoring. Oh, you did this. No, I did this one. Oh, I, well, I, I, did this, I did this under the guise of Ricky. Yeah. Ricky, Ricky was Ricky teaching me. Ricky usually is the yeah. polish master, but yeah, it's it's just a great skill to have. Like what a difference. And now it's really coming together. McGuire's, got, McGuire's tools make yeah. it so easy to shine those things up too, which is really oh, nice. This was cool. Oh, this, horn covers. Yeah, the Hella horn covers were actually 3D printed by a subscriber of ours a couple years ago and I found them. It just so happened that Shelby had, you know, the Hellas, so we decided to throw those on there. There we go, coming back together. I think the black mirrors is a good touch. I don't remember 100%. if we did a black roof. Did we do a black roof? We did do a black yeah. roof. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we kind of kept that, that carbon. from the hood to the roof to the rear. And there we go. Top. Big moment. Revealing Dream Build 6. I think a lot of people are in shock. I think Shelby was in shock a little bit. I love it. The car turned out amazing. Super clean. Tim's truck. That thing's sick. This was a fun one. This was a fun one. Tim was super stoked on this. Wow. A brand new truck, man. Look at this. It's TRD Pro. We put big shocks on it. Look at that. Remote reservoir off-road shocks. And Tim's been actually driving this thing really I know. far off-road, which he, is really cool to see. He's one of those persons that really utilizes everything we did to the uh, to the truck, so that's that's awesome to hear. I remember how much time I spent cleaning the underside of this truck because it's just destroyed. Oh, and I cleaned. And probably I spent a lot of right time now. on the engine bay. The engine bay was <laughs> muddy, <laughs> which was surprising because the truck showed up so clean, and then we opened the hood with that. Holy crap! Well, the exterior was. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't do trucks here. <laughs> so funny, yeah. It was a cool. This was a fun build, man. Look at me. I'm dangling on. Just thought I get a spring in there. <laughs> really complete kit. Look at that. Came with a traction rod. No, it came with everything. New control arms on the back. Really nice. Yeah, really this nice thing, kit. and the way it, it the stands on it at the very end, it was so amazing. Look at that. Boom. Oh, the, the that, shocks? Yeah, we were mounting that, the remote. Yeah, the that's stuff. right, that's right, that's right. Man, we did a good job with this one. <laughs> Here's the front. That skate plate's pretty heavy, too. Very complete kit on the front. We also put a new skid plate on it, didn't we? On the front? But like a heavier duty. I skid think plate. it replaced the bottom one though. Or it was, was like it? A, I oh. think there was like another plate. I remember the TRD plate you guys put it back. Yeah, I think the one at the bottom was uh, we replaced it, replace it with movement. really yeah. thick aluminum or yeah. steel. This kit was cool because it had a, a full upper control arm. So when you raise it, it keeps all of the the camber and the um, keeps the camber. <laughs> caster keeps the camera and the caster where it's supposed to be yeah with polyurethane bushings on it oh yeah times up top really nice kid i wish i would have driven it before and after i think it would have been a, a huge difference on it did you get to drive it after we finished it uh i think i drove it up and down the block just to make sure everything was working correctly but i never i like, took it off road yeah mm. i never drove it before the suspension but i drove it back from the uh wrap shop 
Ah. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, you yeah. changed the color in this thing. Yeah. And it has a beautiful color right it was, now. It, it was is. cool. It drove good when I drove it. Nice. Look at me. What kind of trucks, bro? What's up? Man, that's a lot of stuff, dude. Like, it's a lot. That's right. We had to do a diff leveling kit, too. Oh, yeah. You're right. To keep everything, to keep the axles from coming apart. Yeah. You know, to keep it. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> But the exterior was so clean because Tim's I know, dude. Oh, yeah, I really found a dead snail in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I opened the hood and I couldn't believe how dirty it was. And and, and it's not dirty, like not being oh, it's used. So it's like, good now. Yeah, he went mudding. I think the weekend yeah, before. Yeah, it was he just mudding. Yeah. Here, not knowing that we were gonna do right. this. That was, uh, I want to say it wasn't a challenge, but it was definitely different. I was not expecting for me to have to cut stuff and weld stuff. Uh, well, it's first clear for a lift kit. Bigger, correct. Bigger correct. Wheel and tire. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool that they make the plate so you just pop it on there. Right. Look at Mickey doing surgery here. Yeah, the Viper cuts. Oh, that's what it was called? Yeah, yeah I think that's what they call them. Yeah. Okay, going to work, going to town. Bam. Yeah, that actually changed the look. Now, I'm assuming this is for clearance for the tires, right? In the front. I believe it is. It was hitting on the fender wells on the front up yeah. there. But this is a pretty common model. Like a lot of people do that, I guess. To the, That's a big forms. tire. That is a big. Look at Will with yeah. the dude, technique, the little, dude. Bro, Will, Will manhandle that. Yeah, right? Adam yeah. boy. Look at that, Will. Gonna Get her done, dude. Half. He manhandled that. Look at that. Do you know four too? I would have quit after one. <laughs> so right now it doesn't look like the truck and the color and the color of the wheels doesn't look right until we wrap it. After we wrap it, like the car, it changed a lot. It looks so good. That's right, we did these racks. <laughs> oh, the burrito <laughs> racks. Remember the burrito guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tim put his burritos up there. Oh my God, that's funny. That was a really solid rack. I was like, oh, I don't know how these gonna hold up. But they, they were very strong. I remember Yeah, we put a radio in this thing too. Yeah. That's right. Oh, CV radio, yep. I remember that. Oh, new battery? Let's go. It's still muddy. <laughs> there you go. That color is so cool. Yeah, sand, sand dunes or something? Sand dunes, yeah. We, I mean, it's perfect for him. He's always out there. Yeah, no, it looks really cool. I'm assuming it, like, it doesn't look as dirty when you're out there, right? Because it matches the color of the sand. It's so funny to, like, try to figure out, like, I've seen it dirty and, like, mm -hmm. figure out what's the mud and what's the wrap. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the point of this. Very fitting color for an uh, off-road car, though. Actually, that girl Chelsea, she knows Tim. Like when I sh when I showed up there, she was like, "Oh, do you know Tim? I know Tim from Throttle." I was like, "This is his truck." No way! Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. Right. So they were friends from when Tim had an IS. Oh. And so she had an IS at the, at that time. Too. I remember Tim used to show so, up with the slam IS. Yeah, dragging the exhaust. On yeah, the like slam. The chassis was hitting the floor. Yeah, so she didn't know that Tim got a new truck, so she didn't know this, that this was his. Oh, how cool. That's a good story, man. There you go. Oh, it's coming together. It looks yeah. so good in that color. Almost done, baby. Bring it back. I think we still have more stuff to do after this, right? Didn't we do a, a roof we rack? We did do a roof rack. Right? Yeah, That's right. With all the accessories and stuff. Oh, here comes the Pop wine. Up front. Let's go. Mr. Wheel. Let me turn by Will so he can do his part. That's cool. Oh, the compressor. Oh, that's right. I had to build a custom bracket for it. So this is a battery, a second battery bracket that I use and modified to make the air compressor fit. And it actually fit really good. His CB radio that we installed for him. I wonder if he uses that at all. Talk to truckers? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Yeah, or all the people that have it out there yeah, that are, that are off-roading. He goes off-roading. He usually goes with a group, and I'm sure. I'm sure they all have it. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Look at that factory mounts. Big old roof rack. I feel like we did a lot of roof racks this year. You know what? I think we did. That in Thule's. Yeah, I mean, Thule's yeah. practically a roof rack. Yeah. yeah. 
This got a roof rack, the Audi got a roof rack, the Mazda Speed 3 got a roof rack. Yeah. So those are track sliders? Is that what they're called? I think they're yeah. if you get stuck in sand or something. Yeah, you right, put you them over the tire and then you can drive over oh, them and get cool. you out. Oh, I did this. Yeah, I think I started doing it and I was afraid to cut one of the holes. Yeah, you started it and then I think... I think Mickey finished it, somebody finished yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know, you had to move off something They else. sent me somewhere, yeah. Beagle's exhaust. Magnifier? Oh, the resonator too, oh, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. It's like for drones. This was a cool kit. It was. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's why, because it was in the air. I'm like, man, I'm not climbing up and cutting a hole. <laughs> no, I think we didn't have a drill, a hole thing. That's, that's what I went to go big. get. That's, that's what, what I went to go get. Yeah, yeah. But then I was like, oh, I'll do it later when it's back in the floor. And Mika's like, give me that. And then he'd climb <laughs> a ladder <laughs> and drill a hole. <laughs> that's really cool. Come on, you can't live without the banner, bro. You need that. Oh yeah, get that Bass Pro Shops hat out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get the towel on his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Tim was so happy with it. Yeah, the truck turned out amazing. Yeah, that's what's yeah it's really good. Some big old tires though. All oh, the headlights look amazing. Yeah, everything looks so good. Look at that. I don't know why, but I thought that said afraid. <laughs> <laughs> How cool. All right, the S2000. Man, we waited car. a long time to do one of these, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Such a neat car, dude. And this was the perfect buy. This car was really well maintained, second owner car. And he bought it to basically keep it and drive it for a long time. So he redid the interior for himself and everything. And then ended up selling it to us which was pretty cool. So on this one, we kind of did a little flex. We, we're not S2000 aficionados, so we went outside the box a little bit. We went with a bunch of spoon parts, blade sports, fender vents. We got a lot of resistance on some of the stuff that we did to this car. Yeah, I really liked how it turned out though. I think that part of the fun is not being aficionados in the cars that we do, and it gives us the freedom to kind of go outside of the norm of right. what you would see for some of these chassis. And I think the S2000 turned out really nice. I love the spoon kit on the car. I know it was a really big point of contention yeah. pretty much the entire time we had the car. It really but was. But I think it turned out so nice and so neat. EPR wing was a good addition. You gotta love a GT wing on an S2000. 100%. We, we did a, a lot to this car. We did a lot to this car. Way we, more than we normally would do for a sweepstakes car, which was really cool. It made it really fun, I would say. It really did. It was, it was a really great handling car, and then we added all these looks to it, and it just made it a really awesome driver. I wish we could have had it for longer. Yeah, I think this agreed. is the only uh, sweepstakes car that you've rebuilt the motor completely, right? Yeah, 100%. Well, we wanted to make sure that it was in good running shape and ready for the, what we were going to do to it, which was <laughs> boost, baby. boost the turbo kit by Greddy, which is a really nice piece and really well put together, <laughs> I would say. Oh, but, little cameo there. Yeah, yeah I'm not just making sure we had a good engine, you know, whenever you do forced induction, Doing force induction, turbocharging an engine is one thing, but making sure that it's a good, reliable, solid car that somebody's going to own and drive is is a huge, you know, separate step from just slapping a turbo on something and hoping for the best. Like we wanted to make sure that this car was running solid and was in good, great condition, really good condition for the new owner, which was really nice. So, and I will say the Gritty Turbo Kit which is carb legal which is amazing that you can have that in the state of california boost your F f20 engine or f22 engine and uh have a turbocharged s2000 legally is pretty rad it is awesome yeah so we went with really a full oem engine rebuild i think the only thing that wasn't a factory honda part that went on this rebuild was the head studs was the yeah. head stud kit everything else the rings the bearings all the new timing components, new oil pump is all OEM on it, which is really cool. And the thought process on our side of things was, let's throw this Gretty turbo kit on this car. Let's get the engine prepped for the boost. And then whoever gets this car can do what they want. If they don't live in yeah. California, they can put a bigger turbo, they can throw more boost at it, and they've got a good platform to, to start with. So the kit definitely gives you a lot of room to make improvements, which is really cool. The, the format, how they set it up, gives you room to do with whatever you want, which is really cool. Oh, and a full respray. I forgot that we resprayed this whole yeah, car too. Yeah, that's right. 
And it had a pretty fresh paint job on it already when we got it. So. Yeah, as soon as I, we dry ice blasted the entire car, just cleaned it up really nice. Yeah, the, the body kit definitely needed paint. Once we repainted it, it looked way sharper. Agreed. Such a neat car. So that was one thing with the dry ice blasting. We removed some of the uh, undercoating and stuff in the wheel wells. So Ricky went back and reapplied a lot of that stuff. And when we were done with this car, it basically looked brand new underneath. It basically was a new car all the way around. You know, fresh cooling system. We did all the fluids, all the bushings, sway bars, bracing all throughout the car. All the Cusco bits, wow. Yep. I forgot about all that. Coilovers, control arms, yep, there's new adjustable arms. Canyon Carver for oh, sure. We did the electric parking brake too. That yep. was a neat. That was a neat setup. I didn't know Willwood was doing electric parking brakes like that. Which is oh really yeah. Cool. Yeah, and then we actually used where the handbrake was inside the car for us. We made a 3D printed cell phone pocket, which was a pretty cool idea by Will. Yeah, really trick. That's one of the things when you go for like a big four piston caliper upgrade, and the factory caliper had the parking brake on it. You don't have a parking brake anymore. Right. So there, that was Will actually running the wiring for that. So it's cool that they made an OEM solution for that, which is really nice. Rack spacers, those stabilize the car a little bit. Hey, of course, Gary. we have Gary out here. Hotsport mounts, axle spacers. Anytime you lower an S2000, you want to run axle spacers because you don't want your axles pulling out. It's a big problem with these cars, apparently. There she is. Gretty turbo kit. Gretty 3071R, which is really, really a happy turbo. Super happy turbo. Yeah, and it sounds amazing. It has does. all the great noises that you expect from a turbo. And Garrett has been killing it with the new turbo setups. 100%. And their, their little turbos are like super happy. Yeah. They just make noise all the time, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah, the G25 <laughs> on the Skyline was the same way. It was just making noise on the way up, making noise on the way down. Just the happiest little turbos ever, which is awesome. Man, I think at some point we might need to do another one of these. Yeah, it was a really fun car. Really neat. Hey, look, the oil lines. <laughs> so what, the oil cooler that comes with uh, the turbo kit is really nice, comprehensive uh, setup as well to keep the engine cool, keep the oil temps down. Uh, and it all has brackets, just bolts right to the car, which yeah. is really Maps needed up here. Because when I was building the engine, we put the turbo on and then I couldn't get the oil filter on. I was like, oh, what's going on here? So you, ha you pretty much have to use that oil filter relocation yeah. when, you, when you run their turbo kit. Yeah. But it's nice because it makes oil changes that much easier. It puts the filter in a good location. It's not buried or anything, take yeah. manifold or anything like that. And of course, we didn't have to upgrade the fuel pump with the turbo kit, but it's definitely a really good idea too. So we threw in a new Dishworks pump. Again, expandability. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And the custom laser engraved tip by our boy, Cart Boy. And yeah, we did a roll cage. I totally forgot we did a roll cage in this car. A spoon roll cage. Yeah. This wasn't just any roll cage, too. There were a lot of really nice parts on this car. I forgot about that, too. And this is the same shifter, right, that you have in your yeah. Freak, Yeah, right? so the Freak got like 0, pre zero 01 right? pre-production, and then... Uh, that was they, the actual production model. That was the production that model. Came out, which is cool. Yeah, and it's one of the best feeling shifters ever, in my opinion. Lighting upgrade, we did all new lights on this car. Actually, those are the factory Honda housings with um, new lenses. Okay. And then we'll upgraded the internals as well. Motegi wheels, those, are, those were also a first of their. Yeah, right? Yeah, FF5. Yep. Um, we got the first prototype set of those. This was cool to watch. Like I, I only, I didn't go with you. Yeah. But I remember getting the footage back and editing it and seeing this whole process. Yeah, one of my favorite parts of this build was actually getting to lay out the composites for the roof, which was really fun. I've never gotten to do this before. I've watched it a million times, um, but to actually go there, learn how to lay the the carbon fiber and then pull it from the mold and and make it an actual piece of working componentry for the car was really fun. And we took this top one step further. We actually, instead of using aftermarket products, every mold and seal and latch is all Honda OEM mounted on it. So the guy that won this car got so lucky. This thing was yeah, done so well. 100%. That was really cool. Really interesting piece. Oh, Evan. Oh, this was one thing that was kind of added after the fact because 
We got the car done and realized, man, this thing needs uh, something on the sides. So Makito at uh, Seven Apple actually had a set of side skirts available for us. Oh, and we made a tow hook for the rear. So we ended up putting a stock bumper on the back. Uh, it was a huge point of contention, the rear spoon bumper. And of course we want you guys to want to win the car. So we made, put the factory bumper back on there. So we actually gave the choice of the winner to put the spoon bumper back on if he wanted and he went for it. He yeah, really so the style. this is actually a spoon diffuser underneath the stock bumper in lieu of the spoon rear bumper that goes yeah. with this kit. So he chose the spoon bumper, which was the original look for the car. And Which, I think honestly was the better. I like the car. That. It's I such too. a nice looking, you know. It, it makes anybody the car can so do that. Different. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It makes the car look so unique. This is definitely a safer look. This is our first time doing it, but now I look forward to doing it again. It's going to another uh -huh. another YouTuber influencer shop and building a car. And Jimmy and his team were absolutely the best yeah, ever. It was a lot of fun hanging out. With they them. were so awesome. They received us with open arms, gave us a part of their shop, their tools, everything. They it basically just, felt like an extension of our own team, which was really cool. Yeah, the vibes were great. It was really awesome to work with them. So we found a cream puff out in New Jersey. Drove it to Connecticut, started ripping into it. <laughs> you, mean, you mean we found a brand new Mustang GT 5.0 Fox body. Basically. Oh, here's Evan struggling to get the wheels off. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got it, bro, I got it. <laughs> so, Such a neat car. This car, I think was 48,000 original miles yeah, or something. 40,000 miles, uh, yeah. 19, was it 89? Uh, I, I don't remember the year. I can't remember the year either, but it it basically smells like your grandpa's car that you took to church every Sunday. Right. And it was treated the same way. It was garage kept. We found no rust on this car. Uh, the only thing rotted out was the muffler, I the think. The muffler. And, yeah. uh, Which we replaced. Everything else, and we bought a nice car on purpose just because we knew we were going to be doing this build in a pinch at Jimmy's shop mm -hmm. with minimal tools potentially. And so it went really smooth. It did. We it called did. a couple audibles, but. I don't, I don't even think I'm here yet. No, you hadn't got oh, in yet. That's right, you came late. Yeah, I came late. Yeah, yeah, we did all the hard work and then Ricky oh, showed up. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> there comes the axles. Yeah. So we did a bunch of general maintenance stuff, of course. Uh, so we did have to drive this car from Connecticut to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Ricky and Quinn did that uh, portion of the, of the trip. But we wanted to make sure we had a reliable car that we didn't have to get trapped on the side of the freeway in. Right, correct. Which mission accomplished. Because if you think about it, when you have a 1990 car, 1989 car with only 40,000 miles, who knows when was the last time it was driven? You yeah. don't know what type of maintenance What's, has been what done. What the seals are like. Yeah. Right. So a little bit of performance stuff, but we had to keep it all carb legal. Right. But we had to keep it all um, I, I think, 50 state legal. I think yeah. everything and, and, we... Yeah. yeah. We I think, didn't do any crazy tuning either. Right. It's like the more tuning you do, the more problems you right. actually right. have. Correct. Driving I mean, this it. is what we did. Is like the perfect stuff to do, especially from back in the early '90s. This is what everybody was doing. Back yeah, then. exactly. And this was um, Ricky. You're not. Well, you're about the same age as me, huh? So this was a new car to you when you were yeah. like in your oh, late yeah. teens. Oh yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same with me. And when I was in high school, this was like the car to have. This or a Camaro. So wait, <laughs> when this car came out, you were in high school? Uh, no, I would have been like junior high. Junior high. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was like 10, 11 years old when this car came out. Mm. Yeah, I'm old. So when I was in high school and senior in high school, a bunch of my buddies had these and they were like a year or two old. And they were like, for that era, they were fast. Yeah, I remember my uncle had this car when I was a kid and we used to go for drive. He actually owned this one and he owned the 5.0 convertible oh. one, like the one like Vanilla yeah. Ice. He owned that one too. So Man, this, this if you compare these cars to today's uh, cars, is like, this was the Hellcat from, yeah. from the 90s. This was right. like the go-to. But, but it's kind of slow. It's terribly yeah. slow. I yeah. mean, it's, it's slow now. By today's standards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's just so funny that this was fast then. Yeah. There, there, there was, I don't think there was another V8 5.0 on a two-door vehicle ripping the streets back then. Camaro, that was it. Was what? that a 5.0? Uh, I don't remember the displacement, it but it was the competitor to this. Right. And, and, you and had, to it this was like, still the same. Yeah, one or the other, and then you had the Honda guys that race these guys all the time. Right. Um, oh, there's Devin laying down the vinyl. He was quick, man. He did quick work. Yeah, he was good. And, and good work. Yeah, car's still wrapped today, no issues. I know. And this car was a total pain in the butt too because 
If it was just a regular Mustang, it would have been a lot easier. But we picked the GT, and the, the GT, GT has the body kit. Yeah. And there's a million pieces to the body yeah. kit. So not only do you have which, to wrap... Which, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that they came apart in so many pieces. Oh, I mentioned that to everyone before we bought the car. Like, we should get a regular one because there's so many pieces on the kit. I remember helping my buddy strip his down before it went to paint back in Ohio. And I remember those things being a pain in the butt to take off. And technology back then wasn't as good as today. Like the body right. panels were made of rubber back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they yeah. all flex and have waves in them. And now you can literally yeah. 3D print something and put it in your car. Yeah. <laughs> Just oh, fastener. Look at that, the whole nose going on. I know, with halos and everything, that's crazy. Am I here? I, I'm pretty sure I'm here. Yeah, you're there by then. So what's cool is like, um, these cars are still very popular, so they're still very well supported from a part standpoint. So you can get yeah. all the upgraded lights and... Right. So we modernized this thing a little bit. Um, yeah, there's Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, look at the body. Look at the body kit. Another piece. Another, another piece. piece. And another piece. <laughs> there's Rick. Is that Ricky and I? Yeah, doing the fog lights. We add a little yellow tint to the lights to yeah. kind of tie in that Snooko logo a little and bit. That made a big difference. It looked really good. Black emblems. Yep. Is it? Whoa! Look at that fro. What's going on there? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know you're in the That's in my the good zone, taste. dude. That's my good taste. Oh, and the hood. The custom hood was a neat touch. I use a Japanese vent from a like a Skyline or really 240. Like the race wheel made a uh, made a huge difference on the build too. Because you usually don't see this type of wheels on on a on a 5.0 Mustang. No, there's the rendering. We're very close to it. Yep. Yeah, they did a good job. I mean, we kind of knew going in what it was going to look like, and we just had to. I like it's, it's like sense. having a roadmap. You can kind of like look at the right. picture and build off of that, and make it match. Which is really fun to make it as close as possible. Now, is it challenging? Because I know you, you're you part of this whole uh, designing the car and getting the rendering done, and you have really big inputs on this, Mickey. Uh -huh. um, is it hard or is it easy to, once you see the rendering, making it like real life? No, I mean, it's, it's hard because things do things differently from a flat computer screen to an actual car that has shape and everything. So like, you'll see where things kind of, you change it on the fly basically to make it work. Ooh, here we go. The garage. This the was whole uh, office, the whole building. Was yeah, the well, I was busy. <laughs> so this, this is like when TJ moved out. Basically, right. TJ moved right out. We acquired the extra space, and mm -hmm. we're like, man, what do we do with this space? Okay, let's make it a sick place for us to do thumbnails, photo shoots, and photo thumbnails. shoots the whole night. Which and I think it was a great idea. We got linked up with Race Deck, mm -hmm. and they hooked it up with the black. <laughs> yeah, I remember That's you funny. originally thinking it was gonna take the whole day to do Yeah, the and it was we, so quick. We thought that too. Yeah. All three of us, we and were it was doing like, it. What, yeah, an hour, three, an hour and a half, yeah. something like that. And like it transformed the space. I mean, we had talked about doing epoxy and all that. Right. It takes so right. long. And you have to move everything. You have to move, move everything. Move and it takes yeah a long time to stop. And then we got the hex lighting. Yeah, that now was that one. I expected to be way smaller than what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was big. Like, when, you, when, you, when you think about hex line, you think about PC gaming builds, mm -hmm. and then this thing came out of the box, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> this is huge, look at that. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, like they put that on the ceiling to go down, but right. we kind of wanted to use it as like an accent wall almost, right. because the lighting is not bad in that area, but I think it's cool when you yeah, turn the lights on. Really cool. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh but it looks, yeah, it looks rad. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Oh that's yeah, really good. we painted that. Off yeah, camera, I yep, think. yep. Um, that's where we used to sit, all our desks. Yeah, that's right. That was the office. Here's area. me experimenting. Got the. the I've never brick. done this before. It's yeah, my first time doing it. I painted over the uh, the outlet yeah, there. Yeah. That was <laughs> <laughs> These are some old toolboxes we had. It's like the perfect yeah. backdrop. A little bit of plywood to make them even. That way, the butcher blocks its level with it. Because those toolboxes, see how little gap yeah, in a little it. Yeah, there's a little foam in there before. Yeah. Like so it's funny, I feel that. like I'm old now because I got I get more excited about like how this turned out than yeah. some of the cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ricky, Ricky always does such yeah. a good job like these types of projects. I yeah, try anyone who comes here to the shop, I would mm. say like pretty much all the furniture, like the lobby, everything, like you basically led all those projects and they turned out sick. Like everyone, whoever comes here is like, damn, this place is sweet. So. Yeah, I really, I started doing this in my own house. I built my first custom computer stuff, uh, computer desk, and then um, I loved it. I love it. This right here, the little throttle sign, yeah. I didn't want to see any wires. Yeah, I like So I'm that. like in the ceiling, hiding everything, going through everything. Yeah, it's like over there is like the little control panel, right? Yeah, there. That's, yeah. Cool. that's cool, yeah. I really like it. This is, uh, oh yeah, for this, yeah, yeah, for the top. 
the butcher butcher uh they came in that black top. look clean as well. Yeah, they used to be orange. And that's and then it. we matched the front one. And then we use that all the time now. Like yeah. pretty much almost every day that's or, used for something. There's actually another uh, YouTube channel that started yeah. copying us with that. The, uh, the no, product. that's cool. Like, yeah. That's the whole purpose, yeah. right? So everybody can oh, grab yeah. ideas. And from that's how we got the toolboxes because we got all yeah. that new craftsman stuff. So Right. Boom. Boom. There Looks it is. Looks so good. Very easy and simple. Woo! Version two of the Viper. That's right, that's right. Built this up for Roadkill Nights for the second year running in a row. We were actually supposed to do a Prowler and a lot of you guys asked what happened to that car. Well, Dodge was originally supposed to give us a new engine to put in the Prowler, mm -hmm. which is gonna be a Hurricane twin turbo uh, straight six. Straight six, correct. Yeah. GDI motor um, and nobody had figured out what ECU setup was gonna run the car. So nobody was gonna be able to tune it, which means pretty much everyone was gonna be running right around the 500 horsepower mark. Right. Um, but they couldn't figure out how to put it on a standalone ECU so we could put it in the car. So unfortunately, they gave us Hellcat engines again, which is really not that unfortunate. Right, but this was like after we already bought the Prowler, after yeah. we had plans for it, after we had the rendering for it. And then we realized that the Hellcat Red Eye makes 800 horsepower, and then you put a right. Pulley and ED5 on it, and now you're well over a 1,000. Yes. And just the frame of the Prowler is not set up to handle right. that kind of power and torque. So we ended up version twoing the Viper, right. which so this, already had the red eye in it. So I don't want people to think that we cheated by just going back to what we had. We literally only had two weeks to get this done. And there was serious safety concerns, I think, right. with trying to Correct. put that engine Correct. in a Prowler. Yes. Like, people have done Hellcat and Hemi swaps in a Prowler, but nobody's trying to cut like a 1560 foot with it. And which... what people don't know is that my son Anthony was supposed to be the Rooker. The Rooker, the, the rookie, rookie, the rookie, the rookie yeah. for that year, and because of safety concern, you know, the other one was supposed to have between four and five hundred horsepower, and yeah. automatic, which was fine, uh, but putting, but oh. putting my son in a thousand horsepower uh, Viper, it just, it just wasn't it. It's not the move. No. So we decided to V two the Viper, and they took out the stick shift rule this year. Right, correct. So that's why we ended up with the Turbo 400 automatic, and it's such a more potent transmission. It kind of brings the whole car together. Being able to leave the line on a trans brake is way better than trying to finagle a clutch. It is very consistent, I'll tell you that. Yeah, so this transmission was a built transmission, uh, built by a local shop here in San Diego, and really nice unit, really well set up. Um, it was already, had the conversion bell housing for a Hemi on it, so we just had to space the converter out a little bit, and the rest of it was pretty much bolted in, aside from modifying the frame rails, because it is a right. little bit of a bigger transmission yeah. um, than the uh, TR6060 that was in it before. Other than that, it went together really nice, and the color change was definitely needed. I, I think. know, the, the matte black looks so good. So we ended up restructuring the subframe uh, for it, and because this is pretty much like a kit car, right? If you really want to color that. Two more um, space frame car. Right, it was very easy to just move the uh, frame out of the way and restructure it again and re-weld it back together. So. Pretty simple process, actually. Not really a lot of modification other than the interior. We needed to ditch the entire center console to add that, the side shifter in there. But yeah. But rest of it went really good. We had to add a cooler to the transmission, which was pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, the build, same car, dude. We're still using the stock rear gear, stock axles. Like, I know. The car freaking takes it, man. Dude, that car can handle so much. Yeah. That rear end can handle so much. I think that was the best move we ever did. And I'm surprised we were the only ones that chose a Viper. Yeah, I, the they're, they're fairly expensive to get into. We kind of got lucky because we got a really cheap one. But one thing the automatic also did to the car was stabilize it a lot. Yes. The Viper is yes. a very twitchy car to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you have a six speed letting off of, you know, the, the motor's making almost a thousand horsepower. So when you put the clutch in and then get back on it, because yeah. it's, yeah. it's a positive displacement <laughs> yes. blown, you know, big block, it's got, or it's not a big block, but it's got all the torque, all the power immediately, and it's just really hectic on the rear tires. So the car tries to kill you, but the auto finished it. Damn, look at that missile. Ace Ooh. WRX. This car had been yes. sitting out front of the shop. You hadn't washed it in Deep what? I hadn't Deep washed eight. my car in probably like three months. It was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting. One of the things we did that I loved about this was we did a paint correction. We got it all cleaned up and shined up. That was actually the first thing they did to your car. That was the first thing. While they did all that, we uh, we actually, what, started doing like the carbon fiber goodies and all that? We started putting it on the hood. We started doing, we did a front lip. We did some other, we did side skirts and stuff. 
Dude, those yeah. wheels, those wheels that were on it, they were kind of sick, actually. The Kansai? Kind of missed yeah, them. Yeah, I like, I like Kansai. You kinda still have them? Nice. Yeah, I still have them. They're sitting in my garage. That front lip, though, made a huge difference. 100%. I blew up 100%. my previous front lip, exploded on the freeway, through like running over a pothole. I remember taking off like the old mounts and stuff for yeah. it. Yeah. still just on there. It was yeah. just shredded. Oh, oh, and then the hood the went hood, on. The hood went on. Yeah, the hood really changed up the front end too. I think even more than the lift did a little bit. Look Dude, the, the scoop on that hood is fat. It's that's massive. Like, that's it is what, so big. Everywhere I go, big, yeah. everyone is always like, "Dude, what is this one?" Like most people are used to seeing the other styles. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people haven't seen those really big scoops. So it reminds me of like the old Subaru style. Yeah. Yeah. Super rally. I missed all this. I didn't get to see Ricky do all this work. Oh, he ran, this is the sound yeah. system. Yeah, you guys got a, uh, what, OEM Audio Plus? Yeah, it sounds really good. Still bumping? One thing about Subarus or WRXs, I don't know if for all Subarus, but um, these Subarus specifically, the sound systems are really bad from factory. And this OEM Audio Plus is such a good upgrade. It was so necessary. So this yeah, this made a big difference. Right I was actually stoked on this yeah. thing. Yeah. And some speaker upgrades too. I didn't realize he did all like the dash speakers on that stuff too. Yeah, he did it in like two hours. He knocked it out quick. Yeah, yeah. He did it quick. Well, those are also OEM. Oh, you got the little amp tuner there too? Yeah, yeah. that thing's sick. And yeah. it matches the uh, floor lights. I have blue floor lights. 100%. Yeah, well, the OEM Auto Plus stuff just flies right on. So it's not like you're modifying or adding anything. You're just literally popping it on. Yeah. I do think the gold fits the World Rally Blue of the car a little it bit does. better. It yeah, does. Yeah, it does. It's a very cop popular combo. The uh, like bronze or gold with the blue. It's such a Subaru thing. Yeah. Parent bits, drop bar. We got the little- Oh, my old sides. battery. Remember that Dude, thing? Your old that battery old battery was, was smoked. It was leaking so bad. <laughs> Puny little exhaust. And we did an exhaust upgrade. That's right. Yeah. I remember that. Your other exhaust was pretty loud though. It was really loud. The it quad, was basically straight pipe. Yeah, the quad tips are definitely the look, I yeah. think. Yeah, I love the quad tips. Nice and polished look on them too. Mm-hmm. And we got rid of that diffuser when we put the exhaust on. Just makes it a little, a little bit I cleaner. Kinda, I kind of like that old diffuser though. It was yeah, like it super, was. It, it was, was just. Di it yeah. was like years old, it so was I was like, you know, it's time to get rid of it. RTs in the house, baby. Yeah, with those like bronze. It looks very like super. Bronze yeah, style. it's a popular thing, and I think it's popular for a reason. Oh, I remember those old Tanes. Oh, those things are clapped. They're actually oh, still they're still, they're still sitting in my office. office. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, still sitting in my office. That's if anyone seen. wants them, DM yeah. Nate on Instagram. Anyone want those? Still got them. Super stiff custom coilovers. Twenty four, twenty four k spring rate. Yeah, you still love them. I think I'm at the point where I'm like, ah, I don't love them. But it's it's a fun ride and it makes for great like spirited driving through the canyons and, and all that. So I remember you were laughing the whole first test drive. Yeah, I was bouncing like crazy. Whenever anyone gets in my car, it's just a laugh. That's all <laughs> it is. We just don't even have to say anything. This stuff was all pretty interesting to watch you install. I tried to help you out as much as I could. I filmed it all. Um, definitely made a major difference on the, the coolant or on the uh, oil temps and coolant temps. Do you notice the yeah, temps notice being me. lower? Yep. Now that we have all those coolers on it, there? My temps haven't broke like 200 Sick. since yeah. we've installed all this. This airbox was super trick. I remember like tripping oh. about it when we first put it in. Yeah, Full it's carbon. Nice. And yeah. it's a uh, carb. Uh, carb right? compliant, yep. yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it's interesting because like the STIs and stuff, they don't have that style of intake. So where the turbo is on those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So seeing that where it like goes through the fender and then down is kind of different. We got the access port in there. I forgot about that. She sharpened up nice, dude. The car cleaned up really well, I think. Still looks like that today, baby. Yeah. It looks good. Not like Sean's truck. Nah. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> he kind of let that thing rot away, huh? Yeah. Ah, the freak, and it's new look for the new, well, 
I guess it wasn't really the new year, but. It was due year last year. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been a long-term project for us. We reached out to our friends at Mosey and they made us a wide body kit. Now the look for this car, when I originally started it, was always meant to be championship white. But we went with black because of all the carbon and I think it looked awesome. The livery that Dennis from uh, Max yeah, Boost Max made Boost. for us was yeah. awesome, but it had run its course and it was time for a new look. So we took it, uh, took it off and did the wide body from Mosey, which was a huge improvement over it the was. overall look of the car. Yeah. Uh, it went from looking like a glorified street car to a, a real race car, a real track car. Yeah, I think it gave it that wide body and then we ended up changing the wheels and tires to a, a wider Ooh. stance. Oh God, it looks so great. It did. Look at that. It <laughs> Already does. looks good. But I remember we had a, a car show coming up, so yeah. we couldn't change the whole Not yet. right away. So you guys were pretty tricky. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. We actually laid the same livery back over top of the over yeah. fenders. You ended up getting new, a new livery, yeah. putting it over this thing. We didn't even paint it. This literally came straight from... Yeah, Mosey, yeah. Yeah, straight from Mosey. We put the decals on the wheels on it, and then it went straight to a show. Yeah, I think pretty soon here you'll see SD Design House show up, and we start putting the new vinyls on over top. So what's crazy about that, while we were at the show, nobody noticed <laughs> the body kit. Yeah, because it was Nobody so noticed. Because it, it, like, you, you said it right earlier, like, the, the black hides the body lines mm -hmm. of the vehicle. And you guys will see the difference when you guys see it in white. And this, the livery was pretty seamless too. It was. Look at, that. Look at my fro, yeah. Look at that, There was it was already done yeah. in that yeah. shot right there. <laughs> so yeah, it turned out really cool, but I definitely think what you guys are gonna see after this is all done is the white vinyl goes on, and this car takes a whole new shape. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, here's There's Quinn. Quinn making extra holes in that. <laughs> Quinn's <laughs> making the mount for the hydraulic e-brake, which we still haven't used yet. It does work, but we've only oh, been- Oh no, I've seen you use it. Larry Chan's video video came Oh, we did use it a little bit. And you guys bit, used yeah. it, yeah. We did use it a little bit on the skin yeah. pad. <laughs> it looked good too. Here's SD Design House. Yeah. From black to white. Yeah, this car really, really came alive when the white vinyl so went So I got a picture of this car like when it was like a third done, so it's like half black, half white. Ha! And the best part of the freak is doing rear wheel drive burnouts. burnouts. Yeah. Every time I see this, it just looks so weird to me. <laughs> it looks great, what are you talking about? No, I mean, just Woo! the rear wheels do, putting off smoke is just insane. And one of my favorite touches of the car is the freak logo. That's a nod to the Type R yeah. logo. Yeah, it. yeah, it looks really cool. Look at that. It looks so great. Man, I wish I could drive this thing on the street. That was a great transformation. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing that roll down the freeway? Nah, man, it can't happen. I want to do it. <laughs> there it is. Bam. Levi's Miata. Levi. Another dream build. So we got this car, we pulled it off of the transport and it ran and then we parked it and then it didn't <laughs> run again after that. <laughs> it, it, it didn't it, want it to yeah, run at all. It, it leaked so bad we didn't really want to run it anyways because it would just, I don't know, I think it was double gasketed on the oil filter, but this thing had a ton of other leaks along with it. So literally it fired up, it ran, and then it just like puked a quart of oil on the ground and we just shut it off. <laughs> and then we went to refire it for the video and it wouldn't start. It wouldn't so, start, I know. But this thing had leaks everywhere this is one we absolutely needed to pull the engine out correct just to clean it because everything was disgusting on it there were so many fluid leaks it was ridiculous look at that look at that oh it's all <laughs> caked on so i did the pressure washer was putting it work one of the things that it was so good about the car being so dirty and so full of grease that it saved every bolt and nut in there bro like yeah none of them every, were all every single bolt and nut in there was so clean none rusted um so it made everything a lot easier but look, look at that how yeah, crazy so i, I that. pulled the timing belts off and both the cam seals had like way too much rtv on it and were, mm. were destroyed so that was one of the main leaks was was the the cam seals oh, up wow. there but the oil pan was also yeah. leaking the miata has like a weird double pan gasket it thing does. on it yeah and then, of course, just not doing enough oil changes. We had to clean out the entire oil pan. Look at that. So that's got like a mating surface on it too, which is super weird. So that's exactly what my rotary yeah. engines are gonna look like when I when new I actually gasket, take it apart. New lower <laughs> gasket, new main seals, new cam seals, new timing belt. Just really a good refresh on this thing, which is awesome. Yeah, but this uh, this car was in Levi's family, right? The whole time, like his yeah, mom they, was yes. original owner. They've right? had the car for a really long time. Yeah. Oh, that exhaust heat shield looks really nice. And we did yeah, a full man, cooling we did system. A good job. 
is hooked up, silicon hoses everywhere. I know, all new gaskets, like the car made such a big difference after it was done. Look at that, everything looks brand new, man. The the blacks, yeah, cleaned up yeah. really nice. Damn, I even painted the intake manifold? Yeah, I forgot no, about the that. the engine made a really big turnaround. We Automatic? We don't need that here, come on. Oh, I forgot we did that. I yeah, yeah. It was auto. We did a manual swap. The, the good thing is that, so you can actually find a five speed or a six speed. And when we got the transmission, um, the first thing I checked was if, to see if it was a five or a six. And I was so excited when it was a six speed. They're super rare. They only came on the special edition MB, so. That's pretty dope, we, we were able to uh, find that out. Of course, it didn't come with a clutch because it was auto, so we had to put an action clutch on there. Mm -hmm. the transmission going back in. Oh yeah. Or yeah. not, I guess not back in, because it's, it, it's, it's going in for the first time, time. yeah. First time. New starter, new alternator, everything all shined up. Looks so nice. I know you've done from automatic to uh, manual the swaps. This yeah, was my first I've, one. I've done a lot, but mostly on BMWs. They're super easy to swap. Gotcha. Was... This is my first one. And that's when I found out that the ECU and everything is in between the brake pedal and the clutch pedal. Yeah, <laughs> all, kind of all weird the harness is on. It is, it is kind of weird. Because usually Mazda's have it on the passenger side. This one is right in between the driver's legs. Look at this. Oh, yeah, I remember we did change all that. Good all that. new carpet. I remember we did black carpet. It looked yeah. really nice. That's something we do a lot though, we switch from tan to, to black. Oh, look at that. I did it in my personal nice. car, Mickey's car, on a lot of builds, we do it. What's interesting is how many pieces this carpet kit was. It was like five. Yeah, <laughs> it's a car so small yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> and we did the seat. Oh, uh, yeah. See, okay, got some nice receipts oh, in there. Yeah, the yeah, you guys trash. got new seats. Yes. They were like OEM seats, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. Because the other ones were uh, cracked yeah, and broken. Yeah, so pretty, this one looked brand new. Is that an ISR exhaust? I don't remember. I think it was. It looked yeah. beautiful. I love that. That's not the intake. You just did that just so we can start the no, car. No, yeah, we I remember. put the stock airbox back on just to fire right. it up. All fluid, all new fluids. Mm -hmm. New plugs, baby. Ooh, everything. This thing running right, new belts too. Some good maintenance. We always do maintenance on every single car. That's one thing that I like that we do is do maintenance. Make sure the car runs for a lot longer after they get it back. Silicon hose is huge upgrade. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. fresh coolant. Yeah. So the Ooh, winner of this, or the winner of this transformation, right, is a VIP member, right? All the yes. all, all the dream builds. All yeah. the dream builds are VIP members. But Levi's really interesting because he's pretty vocal in our like in our group, on our VIP group. Right. Yep. And he does all the uh, all of the cars in Forza. Yeah. Forza Motorsports Four and Five. He, all of the cars that we ever built here, he makes them in there. And I know that doesn't it doesn't take ten minutes. Like it takes a no. long time to do that. Yeah. He does every detail, man. That's it's really cool. It, it's amazing, and like it is. I think that's a big reason we, we chose him as a as a as a, our winner for the stream build. Yeah, he's very active on our group chat and everything. So that's that's awesome. It's, it's re it feels nice to give back to people that have our back. You know, yeah. Like always been supporting us since day one. So that's awesome. Boom. There you go. No breaks. Front and back. Gosh. Let's go. Full sand wheel was for the front. That's right, we did do a big break in up front. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Now I'm jealous because I have an NV Miata car and I don't have brakes like that. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint, Will Wood. <laughs> yeah, let's go, bro. Come on, guys. You gotta hook, hook me up. up. Look at that, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And that's how they make direct bolt on kits for like every car. Everything, I know. Makes everything so much you easier. You want to put Willwoods on it? They make a kit for it and you're done. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Full set. Dang, you take too long doing brakes, Wayne. I know what? <laughs> frame rail oh, race. Yeah, frame rail race. Uh, I remember this yeah. was kind of weird to do because we did the carpet earlier and all right. the hardware is go through the chassis. So we had to like Dude. undo the carpet. That I didn't know you had to do. I thought it was like maybe like a rim nut. Yeah, I thought it was That's too. What I, but but it makes like it makes sense. The carpet, so I had to like pull the carpet back, fasten it from underneath while Mickey was underneath yeah, the car. Yeah, that was and that then was put weird. the carpet back, which is kind of funny. Yeah. And we got a new key. His key was so trashed when we got the car. Which I think that? that's why the car wouldn't start. No, because it would just sit there and crank. It wouldn't fire up. Yeah, but the, oh, but you the think it was like an immobilizer yeah. thing? Yeah. I think the immobilizer just like, like broke off. The electronic part of the key yeah. and the physical turning part of the yeah. key was not one piece. Anymore. Right, it was completely it wasn't, destroyed. Yeah. Comes James. Back's auto glass. He does a lot of glass here. Yeah, he really does nice. a lot of 
windshields for us. You know, like almost every car. Yeah. He does it. Yeah. That's one of those things that we, we like to do also if you have, if we get a car and has like a rock ship or a small little crack, instead of fixing it, we just replace the whole thing for a brand new one. Mickey wraps, wrapping the whole Miata. Let's go. That's, That's right, we wrapped yeah, this one. Wrapped yellow. Yeah. What was it called? I don't know, but that's a beautiful yellow. Yeah, I think that was the really best nice. yellow we could have chosen for, for the Miata. It was great. Is that Will? Yeah, we got Will wiring oh, here. Back for the lighting. The, the lights on this car were pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. tail lights with yeah. the carbon. Those are really sick. So uh, Levy actually shows his tail lights, and I'm, I'm assuming because you can actually do them in Forza, <laughs> and he can replicate uh, the car very easily, so that was pretty awesome. And I like the lights, all the carbon fiber, the red, and all the stuff we did to it. Uh, APR mirrors, uh, uh, full size. Um, dude, we did so much to this car. And the carbon and the yellow looks so great on it. I remember being surprised by how easy the side skirts were to put on. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they're like an absolute yeah. nightmare to get those style of skirts on, but those just came on really easily. It was just awesome. And if you see this, you see how the car, I mean, we have five lists in the shop and right now it's in four jack stands and that's, that way we can all do some type of work. We have the wrap guys that came down to help us, uh, help Mickey wrap the car. We have Will in the front. I was part in the interior, Quinny in the back, like we're all doing something. So this is why it's not on the lift, because it just makes it a lot easier for all of us to work. Oh, this is the diffuser. I remember we had to cut a hole in the diffuser. You cut like three muffler. quarters of yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> cut it up to fit the muffler on there. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cool. The little entire package on this car turned out really nice, because we went dude. for like a big, meaty tire setup. It was mm -hmm. kind of super like autocross. Whoa, what was that, back. Quinn? That's, yeah, like, that's cool. like the wheel up technique, the, dude. Uh, I like that. Kick up the wheel, yeah. All right. Look at that. Boom. He was so stoked. Oh, he's oh, so yeah. happy. He was so stoked. I wish he would have brought his daughter. I know his daughter is a huge fan of the show. Yeah. They watch it yeah. together. It would have been cool. She was unfortunate he just couldn't make it. But how cool is that? King Gary in the house. Let's go. What a beautiful transformation. Look at that. Bam. The color is amazing. Dude. The Nose Tech wrap looks like literally paint. It looks so good. That's dope. Really cool. Look at that. Brand new. Well, black carpet makes such a difference. Look at that seat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <crap, dude. laughs> and the ducktail on there. This is another Evan find, the E46. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was trashed, man. Straight up serious. I re um, This car is like, it ran so bad. The I thing, remember yeah. driving it in the parking lot to put it in there. It was so it was bad. Sputter and sputter. It luckily, luckily, BMW engines are pretty resilient. And usually, the thing that goes wrong with them is just small, stupid little things. It's not like a critical engine failure, even though it feels okay. like it gotcha. is when it's running. Wow, what a big transformation that engine yeah, bay did. Engine bay cleaned up really nice. Oh, it looks like somebody already did brakes on it. Or tried. BC callovers, once again. The go-to for us. Oh yeah, those headlights. Oh, you did a lot of like, like, like polishing. Cleaning. Right, so we were trying to find new ones, we just couldn't get them on time. So we were like, all right, well, I guess I'm gonna get to work. And uh, luckily it turned out to be, uh, they turned out pretty yeah, much they brand, new. Almost brand new. Yeah, they look brand new, which is awesome. I remember we polished this car too. Yeah, this was a convertible. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. So the, the rear shock on the E46 and the E36 convertibles, mm -hmm. the rear shock mount is underneath the top. So we had to like get the top working just to be able to put the coil levers on, which is kind of funny. <laughs> what a good transformation. I know we replaced the front bumper as well. Yeah, the bumper. We did the, the top wheels. got replaced by SOS top. as well. That's right. And we got it working. Looks wow, it looks so, so good. good. Damn, we did, we did okay, bro. We did okay. <laughs> Evo, Evo 8, baby. This Actually, was a fun yeah. one. I wish we could have done yeah. more, more with this car yeah. and spent more time with we, it. I, I think this one was really rough when we got it. It was like... It was. Like, it, like it, what's crazy problems. is that it looks good on video, but yeah. this thing was not that good. Yeah, great. in the video, I think we kind of like shortcutted like how much work actually went into making the car run right. 100%. The car barely made it on the trailer when we, yeah. when we got yeah. it the first time. Like, we had to start it like six times just to make it up on the trailer because it was running so poorly. 
But the bones were good. The bones yeah. in the car were really good. Everything was just remember really you different. found that piston in the in the back seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chewed yeah. up till yeah. the yeah. motor was probably blown up. Yeah, somebody was driving this. Well, the guy who bought it from said the engine had dropped the valve at some point in the engine's life, which is what that piston was. It had a big hole in it because it dropped the valve. But compression seemed fine, so. Oh, that's right, you guys were painted the brakes. Yeah. Painted the calipers. So when I, I mean, when you're flipping cars, right, because that's literally what this is, a trade-up series, we're flipping cars. It makes sense for me to just polish the headlights versus spending money and buying new mm -hmm. ones when I can make them look brand new. So a lot of the labor that you're gonna see on this on these videos is like literally polishing, cleaning, and maintenance just to get the car running and looking great. Yeah. That way we can flip it for the next build. Yeah, for these cars, you don't buy too many new parts. Right, you don't want right? to, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Well, there was a lot of parts that we redid, like the hood, for instance, but there was mm -hmm. a lot of like funk in the engine bay going on. You remember that intake pipe? Yes. It had like a yes. garden hose fitting on it, it had a yeah. whole bunch of vacuums. So we redid wiring and remade a new That's intake what I'm saying. board. And but we, the, the whole point of a trailer is serious. Like if somebody's trying to flip cars, for you not to spend too much money, but also sell a good running car. Yeah. yeah. That's, so there's that's a, like there's the a goal. nice balance to it. Too. Right. This is a great example on the BMW and this one, like how to do it. Yeah, 100%. The car turned out sick, too. Yeah, and it was on bear. It was on air suspension. It was, yeah. yeah. I think it'd be cool to get one of these and do it as a, as a, a giveaway. That's a full yeah. plow, yeah. yeah. Hey, the Fiero. Just <laughs> kidding. Yeah. I half expected him not to the real Ferrari. Again. I mean, you fell for the other one, I, I, so I understand I, you, bro. I didn't know it wasn't a real Ferrari until you said it was a Fiero. Well, it was parked <laughs> next to a big truck, and I only saw the back. Yeah, you only saw third from the, the back. Fiero, really so it, the back of the Fiero was really convincing. But luckily, this is an actual Ferrari. Bro. You guys just soak it. Just <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> you you kind of had to with this car. Oh, this yeah. car was sitting outside with the windows down for nine years and the engine bay was covered in feces, bro. Like, you had no choice but to I remember loud. before you guys cleaned it, we made Evan drive it to, like, move it. Or, like, if anyone was gonna move it, it was Evan him, I do remember that, the yeah. car, you get to sit in the field. Like, and nobody's sitting in here except Evan. <laughs> it was so moving. bad. Look at that carpet, dude. Oh, that is poop, bro. It's yeah, caca. Poop and pee. Oh. There's a bunch of caca everywhere. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, yeah, my wires came in handy. We did the best that we could, man. Like we literally, yeah, you guys, we soaked for days. Um, yeah, it was days, literally, okay, it was exactly. days. Well, look at the degrees here, it's like turning black. Yeah. You guys were cleaning it out. There's a huge That's difference, crazy. but it's still not 100. Yeah. Look at that, the door yeah, panels come out really out. good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a shame like the dash leather and all that stuff is still like peeled up. <laughs> yeah, just nothing literally, you can do about that. Everything got sprayed, everything got cleaned. Look at that. Oh. oh. Uh, I'm getting PTSD watching That's this, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this is so bad. This is sat like 10 years outside yeah, or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No cover. Windows down. It was just everyone's car. That's crazy, <laughs> dude. We literally soaked everything. Like, we I'm had to break everything. I'm surprised it bounced back near as good as it did. Right. Right now, we're trying to take the seats off, and I don't know if you can see the wiring coming out of it, red and black. I literally had to bypass every motor in the car because the car just had no battery. Wheels were disgusting. Oh, that's right. This one had a huge crack in the face in the, for some reason. It yeah. Was like leaking. The wheel, too. So, all four wheels got sent out to get uh, refurbished. Took uh, like two or three tries to seal the wheel up. I know. Yeah. I wonder Cause, how. Because they're how, magnesium, right? Yeah. Like, I wonder yeah. what happened to the wheel to have a crack on that part of the face. Oh, like what cost it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but... We were trying to take the engine. This is the first day we were trying to pull the engine. I remember I couldn't find out where all the engine oil was. So I knew it had a dry sump on it and it like kept cracking lines and all that stuff. <laughs> and there was like not a lot of oil. Look at that, it's like full. When we found, finally yeah. figured out where the oil was stored, it <laughs> was like 12 quarts came out. Yeah, Steve came and was like, the one that says oily -o. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luckily the coolant was like brand new. We pulled the coolant out and that's when I knew we were probably gonna end up with a good motor was the coolant still looked brand new. It still looked brand new, yeah. So so Steve is the owner and main mechanic for SD Exotic and Service out of San Diego. And he's done two um, two two of these Ferraris, uh, F355s, and he has rebuilt the engine on both of them. So uh, he, he's also a friend of ours, so it was a good, um, it was perfect for us to give give him a call so he can give us a hand to make yeah, sure we don't screw anything really up. cool working with him because he's just so familiar with these cars and I'm like learning all sorts of things about how it's set up and it's just like normal to him which mm -hmm. what's what was surprising to me is like it was the last 
less weird than I thought it was going to be. There were definitely some weird stuff on it, but like at the end of the day, it's still an engine, it's still a car, but there's just a lot of unique things about it. Like it's got a crank pulley for each bank. Right. It's got like the whole dry sump thing. It's got a three valve head, three intake valves on the Mm -hmm. cylinder head. So it's like the cam setup's kind of weird because everything's at a different angle. and Just, it's got like a mil spec race harness from factory. So I remember this thing also having two ECUs. Yeah, it has one, one per bank. It's so this really is like two four cylinders running together. Essentially, yeah. So yeah. there's like two crank sensors, two like two of, like two of everything. Yeah. There's a coolant temp sensor for each bank, and then there's one for the dash. Like it's just kind of all over the map in that way. Oh, the valve cover turned out really good too. And the valve cover gasket's like a four piece gasket. Oh no! Paper and you have to oh yeah, the paper. Yeah. Yeah, we had to we had to oh, cut it out no. to fit the car, which is, And I was like, is this normal? It's like every single set you do, you have to do this. <laughs> like that's terrible. It's stuff. just like weird stuff like that. And then the clutch is at the back. At the very back, machine. yeah. It's a really funky setup for sure. I think that looks like a fan. That's actually what the clutch Yeah, is. no, that's what the clutch is. And I was like scared. I was scared to take the engine out because I thought it was going to take a dive off the rack. Because you're taking uh, out the entire back right. half of the car. So we had to put all the Yeah, you literally taking the stuff from everything completely out. Yeah, yeah. So two MAF sensors, like the brakes were pretty interesting. Those were actually the ones that were in there aside from the, the pads. We didn't replace the rotors on that. Uh, no, yeah, we so the rotors, I ended up cleaning all the rust out of it. I painted them black and then I sent them to get cut. And yeah, then, they look brand new. Yeah, they look brand new. It's a really interesting setup. So like all the fluid, res- like the cooler reservoir, the power steering is all kind of on top of the valley there, which is really interesting. Yeah, now keep keep reminding yourself, like this is a trade up series, right? And our goal was to end up with a Ferrari, which, which we ended up uh, doing it. Um, but at the same time, we don't know if this engine works, if the transmission is good. So right now, it's like we're keeping the same status, right? We're trying to do as much as we can without spending too much money, just to make sure we don't go over budget if we find something else wrong with it. Yeah. Luckily, the engine was healthy. The transmission still needs some love or maybe or, or some, some figure out. Yeah, yeah, we have to figure out some things for that. But um, this this lights make a huge difference in the car. Hundred percent. They look so good. Look Very good. modern. Super really modern. Cool. LED. They're bright. That's when you put the battery, and we figured out this thing had a kill switch. It did have a kill switch, yeah, we found it. <laughs> Not a brand that. new battery, and it still had zero power. I'm like, yeah. what is going on? But yeah, we got the tail so lights bright. working. I had to do some wiring for that. Yeah, what a beautiful yeah, ride. There's still more work to do on this car for this year, but 100%. Right. But it turned out really good so yeah. far. We got a Ferrari, baby. There it is. The Speed 3. Tactical transformation number one. This was one of my favorite projects, I think, of the entire year. This is something that when it came to like the plan, oh, we're going to do this, everybody, everybody was in shock. Yeah, like, was like a big production. It, right. it was out of the box. It was. For sure. And to be honest, we didn't plan on doing this, but when I met with JT out uh, at Bla- in Black for Black Rifle, mm-hmm. um, he's one of the co-founders, and he's like, let's do it rally style. And I was yeah. like, I've never seen that before. And we kind of just went for it. To my knowledge, we're the only ones who have ever I don't think I've three. ever seen a, a Speed 3 like this. Yeah. Like, uh, one of my friends has one, he's like super into them. Yeah. It's like, it's rare for him to see another one. Yeah. It's so we did, all, we did everything to Every, this car. Oh yeah. We did all the maintenance, the clutch. And a, lot, a lot of it was custom made. I, because it's such an off the wall uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't think I don't know if we mentioned it in the video that the the trim for the wheel wells is actually for a super super Outback. super yeah, yeah. for yeah. an Outback yeah. yeah it's actually already on right now you did the ARB air compressor I really like I mean that. this thing yeah. this was ready to go yeah swing arm the swing arm we had to modify multiple times yeah. uh, here's Mickey trying to fit yeah. Subaru parts into a Mazda <laughs> the full bar oh Gary yeah, yeah. yeah. The test fit the fuel wheels look at that. Uh, little Thule rack. It looks so rad. And that thing housed like a ton of stuff. It had yeah. lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had. The, and, and the majority of it was from a Subi, right? Yeah, a lot of the parts yeah. were from Subaru. There we go. Opalite oh, optics yeah. came down. They're so nice. They are super cool. They're quick to get down. I don't envy them to do, cut, yeah. cut oh, off. I don't have the yeah, patience for that. His back is like starting to hurt. Yeah, There's my back going out, yeah. pulling out seats. Oh, the custom seats. <laughs> How many sets of seats did you do this? I year? think a lot. Probably the most ever. I think we did a lot Look of at sets. That. Of Every seats. car got seats. Yeah. 
Yeah. Got the cork sport steering wheel. That was a nice touch. And for this car, it was like uh, for the seats was yeah. really uh, challenging because they had the weight sensors on That's it. That's right. But we got it to work. We had the the gas can, the roto yeah, packs the holder. on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked really That's cool. cool. That's yeah. cool. I love that. The red looks so good against the car. Saban. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Lots of carbon. I know we added yeah. a decent amount of weight, but we also, I guess, lightened it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and like all that stuff can be like taken off yeah. too. Yeah. Look how cool so this looks. Insane. Oh this is and so then, cool. And then from here, it's like, damn, that's already pretty cool. And then. Right. Yeah, when we showed it to Justin, yeah. the liveries on it. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. SD Design so cool. House did the design. They really took the lead on that and the install. <laughs> It turned out so sick. He loved the car. So what a cool. deserving guy, too. Oh, yeah, for sure, 100%. Brand new BRZ. Brand new to us. I think this is a 2022 yeah, model. Yeah, I think it didn't have a lot of miles on it. No, no it had like 3,000 miles. miles. I was actually really stoked because I like the first generation uh, FRX mm -hmm. BRZs. They're still yeah. expensive, and I don't know if I'd buy one, but I really wanted to pay with the second one. Oh, God, what am I doing? I already took the whole trunk apart. Oh, for the shocks. Yeah, for the pullovers. You guys put uh, ST pullovers. ST pullovers. Yeah. yeah. But the car fascinates me. The increase in displacement because it's a 2.4 liter, the torque band, like I just wanted to see how it was to drive and it was a really happy, little fun car to drive around in. So I'm really glad we got to play with one finally. So I like the looks of it. We got some, uh, what are those, rotiforms? Rotiforms, oh, rotiforms on really nice right. ones. Yeah. The fitment was a little high, you know, and so we had to massage some things to make it work. But yeah, it I think this was the standards. first black on black uh, car we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, this 300 kit fits so well. I'm really glad they did like a full narrow body kit. Yeah, colors, yeah. It was so easy to install. Everything fit perfect. There was no crazy gaps, nothing to heat up and warp and bend. Everything was just straight up. Uh, very easy to install. Now that front wave, I went crazy on it. I put bolts where bolts weren't even supposed to be. And I just made sure that thing wasn't gonna fall because I knew Victor was gonna drive it. Oh, I never drove this car. <laughs> <laughs> After the lift went on, that's it. I reinforced the heck out of it. Oh, this is when we did the uh, the oil pan yeah, issue so situation. Yeah, these are notorious for sucking RTV up into the oil sump and then destroying yeah. the engine. So you guys found some of them. We did. Yeah, yeah I really we, didn't think we were gonna no, have me a problem on our, on our car for some reason. I don't know why I thought our car was not gonna have the problem. I was like, oh, that's like doesn't because happen. it never happens to you, yeah. to like to you, yeah, right? And then it did. It totally oh did. It was God, yeah. junk up in there. So I'm glad we got that fixed. And yeah. Magnaflow exhaust, baby. Can't go wrong with Magnaflow. 100%. The, the stock exhaust so was just not it on those. You just couldn't hear anything. Yeah, I think we dropped like those. 40 pounds just by replacing the exhaust. Yeah, the, the only thing you hear on those really is heavy. like the GDI, you hear the ticking. Right. Yeah. On the engine, and that's about it. Look at that. And it looks Beautiful. really nice. Right. That I could still can't believe about the anti gravity. Yeah. I thought they sent this a demo piece. The yeah, first me too. one they sent, I thought it was a demo piece. I didn't realize it was an actual. That was the battery. actual battery. It was so light. Extremely light. And of course, we got to add the JD Customs. Really polishes off the engine bay. I still haven't seen black. a part from them that I don't like. Like everything they have sent to us is this is top notch, top quality. They always put a logo on everything, which is super awesome. I really like those guys and their parts. Everything they have is like really high class. And we went heavy on the carbon fiber on this guy. Yeah, I we forgot did. about that. All the interior inlays. Mm -hmm. And it turned it transformed the car because it made it look so much better. Because you know the interior of this specific car has suede in it. A lot of suede yeah. and a lot of red stitching. And the carbon just took it over the over the top. More street hunter stuff? Let's go. Oh, dude, eighty percent of this build was just us adding carbon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carbon and black, man, it looks so good. What am I doing here? Woolwoods, baby! Did we? On a brand new car, let's yeah, go! Yeah, of course, dude, you man, got it. we're going crazy. With the red? Woo. Oh yeah, the red looks good. I'm so glad we went with red calipers, because um, if we would've gone black, I just would've hit it with, with so much black in the car, but the red actually stands out and looks really good. You know, a lot of people comment that we didn't like add like power to this car, right? And being in California, it's like, we can't. Right. But like the new owner could because the car comes with 20K cash. Right. So depending on what state they live in and what they want to do, like you guys have added all the suspension and all the brakes, like the car is ready. Like a lot of people add power and then the car like can't handle it. Like, right, right. Yeah. 
So you have the big brake out brake kit, you got the entire suspension, all the Cusco bracing, you got half the market exhaust, you can literally grab that money and just add whatever power you want in yeah, the car. I don't think Edelbrock the has, the, the way to do it for those cars is to add the Edelbrock lower, like we did on um, yeah, Alex's that was, gears. Yeah, that was good. One. But at the same time, it's such it's, an easy install, but I don't think they have a kit out yet for this generation. Yeah, because it it's takes gonna, time for them to get the, uh, the what, what do you call it? The car, the car, the car approved, the, yeah. yeah, for us at least. Stuff. But that's such a... But I'm like, sure it'll be coming out. Yeah, that was such a nice, easy upgrade to do on, on the BRG. Here's Gary oh, helping yeah, me with the headlights. Actually getting dirty, that's my boy. We always have a great time when Gary's here. We always have fun with him. Hopefully we'll see him more often. But he helped you guys out with the shifter too, right? Uh, you guys the I th it was the headlight tail lights for sure. Um, I think so. Oh yeah, there it is, look at that. <laughs> I, I forgot I did this. My brain is just different right now. I, I don't even remember doing this. <laughs> well, there it is. You did it. I, you yeah, did it. I'm, yeah. That's cool. We've had a few of those shifters. Uh, what's the brand of that? ISR, right? Is, is it ISR? That like that style, like the kind of bolt action mounts. It was like a sequential shifter. transmission. Yeah, and, like, and it makes it the the shift very short. We've done a few of them, and yeah. like, it's one of those shifters that I don't know if I like it or I hate it. I love it. You know, I, I love Nachi. Nachi uh, shifters, like I really love them. All my cars have them and I just, I, I cannot drive a car without it. I feel weird. Yeah, it's it's an interesting feel. Like, it, it again, is. I don't know if I really like it or if I don't like it. I think it depends on the car. I think you just have to put one on and then daily drive it and then figure it just out. Like after, after a like month. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get one like super Nachi for my FD, but I don't yeah. But like, I don't know if I could put one of those in my M3. Like I feel like it'd be too much. Uh, I. I'll use him with my babies, I don't care. <laughs>The new Nissan Z. I know, this car actually came from Christina Rokis and uh, Graham. I remember they were doing it on their TikTok. Uh, so and we ended up with it. So it's such a hard car to find that we actually had to buy it secondhand from another influencer and put it back to stock basically and start from scratch essentially. Correct. That hood was not it. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, nothing on it was it. So we basically put it back to stock, as you guys can see here, got it polished up. Ricky did a great job getting this thing back to basically showroom condition where we could start doing the mods that we wanted to do on it. Mm -hmm. And the guys literally just wrapped this hood just for the time being till we got the hood that we were putting on it so the car didn't, wasn't two different colors, right? Right. And it, it looks good on pictures and camera while we're working yeah, on I mean, it. You just gotta be kicking the parts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, those seats were terrible, let's be honest. <laughs> so we actually ended up adding the Recaro seats, the leather ones, and those ones we actually been using a lot lately. Um, they actually have uh, heated seats in it, and it was fairly easy to install and wire up. And this specific model of the Z did not have uh, heated seats. Now this was, uh, it wasn't a base model, but definitely the seat upgrade was probably my favorite upgrade on the whole car. The wide body was a close second. Oh, that's right, we didn't end up putting the Liberty Walk kit on this one. And it went to SEMA! Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> there we got a nice magnum flow on it. So the stock pipes on this car, for whatever reason, are like the skinniest little exhaust pipes of any I car I've I have never seen, seen anything that's thin before. You know you're gonna throw it away, and they're like, ah, I don't want to do Don't waste yeah. the money on yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this, this magnum flow exhaust was a much needed upgrade over what was on it before, and it just didn't really sound that good to begin with, in my opinion. It was really too raspy, and this really kind of toned down the sound and brought the volume out, which is really nice. Yeah, it was great. With the X pipe, and we ran it without the without the resonators, which made it sound even better, in my opinion. Right. Surprisingly, it wasn't too loud with the straight through pipes. I thought it was going to be like excessively loud, and we we're going to have to put the, the dampers back in, but we didn't. Right. This was an exciting day. This was the Liberty Walk. What? This was basically the second kit out of Liberty Walk, and the first one in America, which was pretty. It's kind of an honor to have that right. notoriety, and they trusted us to do a good job getting it installed properly. I mean, we I couldn't possibly screw this up. We've done so many. Right, and one of the best things about Liberty Walk is that they fit so well. Like, if the panels, the gaps don't line up perfectly, then you know you have it in the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's like bulletproof. It's cool because all the pieces have mounting flanges. 
yeah. underneath yeah. against the body. Yep. Really nice kit. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that we weren't going to repaint the car, just paint the kit. So we had to be very careful while installing it not to damage At, the I'm factory paint. Pretty sure we used like 10 rolls of tape during, during this process. <laughs> yeah. That's where all our tape was. <laughs> Yeah, but um, we did okay. I I didn't really mess up anything this time to send the car. <laughs> to well, send, no, that's, not true. that's not true. You did mess up the trunk. No, I oh I did. Yeah. Yes. I, no, never mind. I'll take Wait, that back. What happened with the trunk? I you slipped with the drill. Yeah, and then I hit the trunk and I took a big chunk of oh, paint off. Man, <laughs> we had to fix that. It's all Oops. good. I always do something. It happens. I did it on the Supra too, remember? Ah, oh, <laughs> thankfully that god awful hood is gone. Yeah. <laughs> that front bumper is probably my favorite part of the whole kit. Just bringing the nose out did a lot for the car, I think. It made it look like the old movies. school 240Z, which I'm pretty yeah. sure that was the whole purpose of this kit. And yeah. it, it, it really transformed it really well. Super one gun style kit, I love it. That. More blue tape everywhere, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 3M, where's our sponsorship? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Bring it back down. Oh, it looks uh, awful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. color on it definitely looks funky. <laughs> With those colors. wheels. Those long wheels. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those wheels definitely shows how wide the wide body kit is. Yeah, that's true. But man, Lorenzo, right here. you guys knocked mm -hmm. out the airbag kit out. Quick. Oh, I had to turn him to slow down. He's such a quick worker. Lorenzo from Icebox Customs. Man, he is a wizard with air suspension, that's for he sure. He is so quick. I'm like, man, you gotta slow down. The camera could even pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> You, you can tell he was like anxious to work. I'm like, ah, oh, hold on, she's chill, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta move the camera to the other side. <laughs> well, he's not used to filming everything. Yeah, he does. Like, I, think, right. I don't think people realize like it slows your time and like it like doubles how long it takes you to do the work. Yeah, and yeah. filming. And when we have meetings about building cars, um, if you think about coilovers, it's like okay, it'll take you four hours. For us, it'll take us eight hours. Just because you have to slow down, you have to move the camera. We have to sometimes we gotta do the same thing twice. We gotta get a shot for the phone and for Instagram right. and TikTok, and then get one for the big camera, which is gonna be a, the main video up here. So it's it's a lot, but once you kind of get in the workflow, it gets easier to do. But then yeah. you bring in someone who doesn't do that regularly, and then it kind of throws everybody off pace a little bit. So ah, my favorite part of the project, yeah, cutting Mickey, the... <laughs> mm -hmm. doing surgery over here. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy it. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I do really enjoy doing this. This is so and, cool. And uh, it's funny because each one, as much as it's the same process, each one is different. It's different, yeah. yeah. And Ricky knows that because he does a lot yeah. of the finish welding and, and uh, wheel well work. They're all different. Every all last different, one yeah. of them. Luckily, the gas door on this car is really high. Even though it's huge, it's it didn't huge. seem to be like in the way. In the yeah, way that some other wide body kits are. That's true, because it usually complicates things. Oh, there we are. Oh god, that looks so full bad. laid out. <laughs> <laughs> On stock offset wheels, yeah. Okay, we're taking it back apart. This is what a lot of people just don't understand when it comes to building something like this. It goes on and off, on and off. Parts goes on, part comes back off. Oh, I'm doing the wheel wheels now. Here's Ricky yeah. closing off the wheel well area so that no uh, debris gets inside of the chassis. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want to do is cut a car like this and take away. First of all, the, the support of the materials that were there, and then also just allowing elements to get in behind the factory panels. You don't want to do that. So weld it up, seam seal it. It, seem, it seems like we have such a great team and we already know what everybody's doing. <laughs> Mickey cuts it, I weld the wheel wells together. He seam seals it. I go on to the next wheel well, we already made yeah, the covers. It's like, <laughs> we don't even have to talk to each other. We already know what each, each of us gotta do. That was a huge upgrade for this car. And those are actually 370Z brakes, believe it or not. Right, right. We adapted to fit this car. And the only thing different is actually the brake lines. Yeah, everything else was literally bolt on. It's just the, huh, lines, I didn't know the that. front lines were like a little bit too long. Oh, it wow. Just, they had too much lead on them. And that was literally that the was only it. problem with coming to that. Those are some big wheels. Those are the meats, baby. Yeah. Look at that. This this wheel entire package transformed this car. 315. Let's go. Yeah, but they still have good sidewall on them, which mm -hmm. I really like. I know, it looks really good. Man, I made that bolt on the inside. You can't even see the bolts for the rear diffuser. No, it's really nice. That's right. Downstar came through with some titanium hardware. Those were that the was, first ones yeah. out of Downstar too. We're to be honest, 100%. when you said you were getting titanium bolts, I was like, I don't know about that, Mick. But when it was finished, uh, of course, 
you, you, you know how it, it is. Yeah. You have to see it. Like I'm sure you visualize it in your head, but I, I just couldn't see it. But it looks so good. It added so Did a good much job. Needed. Yeah, a little, the the car. little Look. extra something because the car's all black. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Look, and it matched it matched the wheels, mm -hmm. uh, the titanium hardware. It matched the wheels really good. Yeah, it's not in your face. I think when right. when I told you what we were gonna do, you were like, "Oh, it's gonna stand out too much." But right, right, because exactly. of the burnt finish that they mm -hmm. do on it, mm -hmm. and how close it was to the wheels. To actually, the wheels, it's yeah. really good. It looked it look really good. Hey, look at that! Now nah, it looks beautiful. Look at that beautiful piece. First time laying it out outside, I think. I think everybody was sitting around there for like hours. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was out front yeah. of the job. Yeah, everyone went out. One, one thing, thing we didn't tell anybody was this thing goes so low that it actually the front subframe sits on the ground. On the ground, yes. Yeah. And the exhaust pipes in the rear sit on the ground. Yeah, so which, it can't go lower because the subframe is hitting the ground. <laughs> not because it's physically gonna cannot go lower unless yeah. you dig a hole in the dirt. All right, well, we hope you guys enjoyed all of those epic builds from 2023, but I can tell you 2024 is gonna be even bigger and better. We've got some amazing projects planned for this year, and you guys are gonna have to wait to see what those are. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace. Ah.